Cyberspace. Is there gender in cyberspace? Are there males, are there females? If so, is there feminism in cyberspace? Nancy Patterson is from Toronto, and this is one of your things. Feminism in cyberspace. Definitely. Um, the notion of feminism at the close of this uh, century and millennium is in a great deal of disarray. There are pieces of feminism lying at our feet, along with every other uh, philosophy, in shreds, in tatters, in pieces. Uh, where do we go after postmodernism? What is the nature of uh, my interest in uh, philosophy centers around feminism and new technology art. Other areas in philosophy similarly suffer some kind of disarray as a result of their location. As we approach the millennium, we live more and more in a cyberspace. Uh, it has been commonly referred to the internet, telecommunications networks, everything from uh, visualization displays from virtual reality, head-mounted displays, to a room where you stand in and control where you go, like the holodeck on Star Wars. Um, all these things refer to cyberspace, data space, cyber um, living, cyber technology. What is the role of feminism in this? Is to be reconstructed after so much deconstruction involved in postmodernism, to rebuild, to make new alliances, to forge um, strategies of cooperation so that when we are faced with the uh, philosophical questions that come with living in a new space, we are stronger to cope with them. And to forge the strategies, I would suggest cyber feminism uh, based on three American uh, women writers. Uh, Sandy Stone, Donna Haraway, and Brenda Laurel. From Sandy Stone, I have gotten an idea called transgender. It involves cooperation between sexes, cooperation between races. It involves cultural diversity, and it involves men and women in cyber feminism, not just women. From Donna Haraway, I have the image of a cyborg a new biotechnological being in the world, and from Brenda Laurel, pretty much everything else in terms of uh, philosophical background. Cyberfeminism in data space goes not post-gender, but transgender, above the concerns of gender. We will always have sex, male, female, changing sex, um, no sex. You cannot alter these things and make uh, a genetically, uh, like an earthworm, uh, a sexualized being that is both sexes. What we can do is go above and think about issues that are more um, of concern, such as transgender, cultural diversity, and technology. Now, if you try to give this a dimension, if you say there's a horizontal and a vertical, a vertical dimension, do you see feminism as, as being the lower part, the earth part of the vertical dimension, or do you see it as, an, as a broadening of technology to, to go into many more aspects, many more? Bingo. Yes. Um, in terms of computer visualization, the X, Y, Z, the Z axis, the Z buffer in computer graphics, it's a good analogy. Um, but to go beyond, the problems that we're going to face after three years from now, the millennium, are going to be much bigger. Poverty, starvation, world war, uh, identity and technology, copyright and technology, uh, how to earn a living in new data space, how to make uh, responsible images, how, how to govern ourselves. There are bigger issues, and I want to look at these issues and get past the concerns of postmodernism. Um, the thing that I can point to as evidence for these uh, claims is right now we have many intellectuals who have written books. They come from Harvard, they come from famous European universities, and the book titles are The End of History, The Death of Capitalism, The End of Art, The um, End of Everything. There are maybe 300 books written by famous intellectuals, and they are good information. They point to the end of linear history, the notion that history moves in a straight line from this idea to this idea to this idea to this idea in a line. It's gone. 
It's going in a free fall, and we have to pick out what is important from all these things. And as we go to the millennium, 2000, 2001, boom, the issues are going to become more complicated. Now, we're here in Bonn, in Germany, and about more than 100 years ago, people like Hegel already said that the end of culture is here. And now people like, I think, Fukuyama in, uh, in, in Japan said this is the end of the Western culture. The, the, we've peaked out on rationalism. How do you see then the role of feminism? Is that to counteract that rational thinking or is it a whole new wave? Um, I, I cannot say exactly what feminism will do. My opinion tends to lean towards um, telepathy, insight, and intuition, primarily because if you say we have reached the limits of rationalism or we have reached the limits of all of these things, philosophy and so on, where can we turn to for um, more enhanced ability for perception? If we use 10% um, of our brain and we can find scientific methodology to prove uh, brain functions, the relationship between brain and mind is a tenuous relationship, then why not study more in terms of the area of the other 90% of the mind, the, the consciousness, um, the structure of awareness involving telepathy, intuition. And I would suggest perhaps that when artificial intelligence becomes more advanced, it will perhaps discover that telepathy, intuition, are pattern recognition systems of a higher order or a more complicated order, and there may be scientific proof of it in the future. In fact, you're talking about an expanding of, of the use of, well, not technologies, but, but ways of communication. Now, how, how perception. How does this relate to feminism in the sense that if we go back a long time, we had the Elysian uh, Mysteries where the goddess Demeter, which was really the goddess of earth and, and, and uh, grain, played a role in expanding in those days the mind of the people by some kind of mystery cult. Is that what we need in, in cyberspace? Whenever we don't understand something in science, we call it, it's a psychic phenomena and it's an illusion. And I reject this idea that simply because science so far cannot mathematically or scientifically prove something, then everything else is psychic, everything else is ESP or telepathy or something like that. And the notion that women are somehow more connected with the earth or with their feelings, perhaps all I can suggest is I think women are more involved with personal experience. And the reason why they're more involved with personal experience is insofar as it has always been a man's world, women tend to be more grounded in their reality. If they are told, you are wrong, you don't understand, they go away and say, okay, I believe this, and they can't understand, or they say, no, I believe what I think is true. Now, this might lead to being more in touch with your feelings. It might not. The fact that um, women are uh, more uh, grounded in their personal reality is, I think, more a fact than women are grounded in their feelings. A byproduct of being grounded in your personal reality may be in touch with feelings more, may not be. I think it's more a fact of living in a sort of dominant um, male reality tends to lead women to be more uh, solid inside their realities. And when we move to cyberspace and you aren't sure about a dominant reality anymore, they may be more easily to live there or to work there or to survive there because it's a free fall space where you rely on your personal convictions more than on an outside um, authentication system. But being in touch with feelings more, I think, is a side uh, symptom of this other reality rather than um, the, the central tenet. At the moment, the dominant cyberspace medium is internet. We're moving towards more video, more bandwidth. Um, there is a danger that that bandwidth is actually going to be used mostly for um, porn, for sex, 
um, in what you would call anti-feminist uh, variations. Um, what can be done to counteract that trend? Um, what is happening with the internet, as I understand it, is um, it's breaking up into virtual private networks. The World Wide Web, as we know it, is changing uh, politically and socially as we speak. And what is happening is, for example, the universities in North America are breaking away into a private network situation. Prior to the invention of the World Wide Web, when you had to know Unix and when you worked with text and typing, um, a semi-professional person such as myself could get access to fairly high level scientific information, but you had to know how to get at it, Telnet, and to archiving, and to get uh, this kind of information. Now with the World Wide Web, it's very much like watching Jeopardy. It's a game show, it's a, a thin veneer of a question and an answer, and no context, no deep information. It's, it's fine for the public, it's fine for um, people like um, my parents who use America Online and the World Wide Web, but virtual private networks where they go off by themselves and make a private network you and I can access if we go into it. It might be a different protocol. Um, I'm not sure how it's set up, but I can guarantee you that there will be more than an autonomous World Wide Web, many different networks for different purposes. Wouldn't that lead to new fragmentation of um, this, this cyber culture? Definitely. Sure. More newer problems that we never imagined before. If we stay with 20th century problems, we're B. The newer problems that come with the 21st century are bigger.